As I started to set up for the lesson, you'll see that I had a helper come to join me. Our scriptures today talked a great deal about the value of a human, the value of a life. Each human, each person, each life on earth has a different value. But when someone says of themselves, I am not worthy, this statement equals each of these following statements. I am not a value. I am beneath your notice. I am beneath contempt. I should not be counted. I am subhuman. Do to me as you will. In our society, this is the message sent clearly to many of our citizens by others. They do not say it of themselves, but others say it of them. In the United States, this message is said by those who believe that they are entitled by merit of nothing more than they work and are offered the opportunity to purchase health insurance at exorbitant rates, allowing in the United States which is banned in the rest of the world for people and companies to profit off the illness and death of individuals. Another person may, take, may make twice the wage of the entitled person speaking, the person putting on airs, the person putting themselves in the position of judgment and thus violating the laws of Jesus and the laws of God. That the entitled person has health care and believes that only those of value should have access to health care. This speaks of the evil in the United States that is endemic. When we speak of making the access and ability to receive health care available to all persons, those entitled start then judging who should live, who should die. The message they are sending is this, though they will deny it when they see it, read it, or hear it here. No child is of value. All children are beneath contempt, subhuman, and should be allowed to die if they get sick or very hurt. They shouldn't be allowed to have the CHIPS program, for it prolongs the suffering. Let them die, especially those preemies, because they waste so many resources. No elderly person is of value. All of the retired and every elderly person is subhuman and beneath contempt. They don't count as humans. They don't count for anything except waste. And they should definitely be allowed to die and be assisted along the way whenever possible. If they get sick, have any long-term illnesses or fall and get hurt, help them to die quickly and peacefully. They waste valuable health care resources that should be reserved for those who will benefit from the care by living years and years longer rather than just weeks or months. Turn off the machines. COVID-19, of course, has been a great helper in this process, clearing out the junk in the pointless storage centers, the human warehouses called care centers. In the United States, these are mere death holding rooms, hiring the least qualified persons and making sure the residents have the least dignity in all of the human daily required activities, such as toileting, making sure that there is no privacy ever. No mentally handicapped persons 
have any value at all and shouldn't be allowed to survive birth. There's no reason to give any medical care to these creatures at all. These things at birth shouldn't survive because they'll always be a burden, so shouldn't ever be encouraged to live. Those that survive shouldn't be given any medical care, ever, because they will be, there will be mistakes caused by some sin of the parents or from a mother using drugs. Be merciful and just kill it. No physically disabled person has any value unless she or he can live entirely independently and can earn its own wage. If sick or injured, look to the elderly as waste of resources, follow those examples and move on. No employed person has value unless she or he can earn their own wage again immediately and take care of his or her own needs. For these last categories, there is no safety net, there is no Social Security, no Medicare, no Medicaid, no welfare, no food stamps. There is no need for them, for these are just wasted resources on these people. Let them die. If you agreed with any sentence spoken, you are already lost. You are beyond redemption, for you have judged others as unworthy of life. A job only God may do, and you are already get condemned to Gehenna. You are covered in darkness, and you should feel the fire reaching out for you. If you wish to change, to soften your rock-hard heart, beg for forgiveness. Beg for forgiveness of God and of every person you have violated with these thoughts, every person you have trespassed against. Beg for God's grace and work for redemption by showing your change of attitude. Show you mean your change, not just in words, but in action. And bring a few others of your fellows in need of similar repentance with you. Show your change with your vote. Show your change with your money. Show your change by volunteering your time. Show all how your heart has softened. Mark for all the world the change that God has made in you, like selling the immoral health care stock and giving all the profits to a program to benefit the groups above. Give unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. Please pray the following for the next 17 days. May the Holy Spirit, the builder of fraternity, give us the grace to walk beside one another. May he make us courageous as we experience unprecedented ways of sharing and of mission. May he help us expose our fears to the brightness of Christ's love, showing those fears to be mere shadows, allowing all to reach across that which divides, to join together against all hate and all discrimination. We ask this through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.